as the EU buff gets activated, NA's fate has been estimated. Will these two regions make it through two quarters? There's only one way to find out as we predict. Week two of Worlds, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Anarchy Analysis. Worlds predictions video for week two of the group stages. And we've got a lot to talk about here as we've got 24 games in total for this week, as well as the results for the first week of groups. But without further ado, let us jump into today's video and get this show on the road. So we get into our world's results and right now, as you can see on screen, our planes results was 16 out of 28. I didn't show that in last week's video. As for this week, we got a big score of 17 out of 24. Obviously, that's only dropping a total of 7 games, which is huge in consideration to the 24 being played. Now. The results that we dropped was LGD losing to Gen G on day one, as well as TSM losing to Fnatic on the same day, giving us a total of four out of six on day one. Day two, Matchy beating Team Liquid we got wrong, and that's the only one on day two we got wrong, giving us a total of five out of six. Day three, it was a four out of six once again, TL losing to Sunning, and also. Rogue losing to JD Gaming gave us a nice total there of 4 out of 6. As for the last day, another 4 out of 6 because G2 lost to Team Liquid and we also predicted TSM beating LGD. So big losses for TSM costing us a couple of points here but the rest of the results seem fairly standard in terms of who we predicted. Obviously, the upsets did come through, and we got quite a few of them correct. Well, anyway, let us jump into today's predictions for week two. And it's going to be interesting because we're going to be seeing the same teams on the same day as groups. Each group will be played on a different day. So we kick off the second week of groups with a very big matchup in Group A to get us going. We start with Team Liquid versus G2 Esports. Now, week one, Team Liquid came out on top and beat this G2 roster that was basically undefeated in groups, beating the other two teams in this group. And as a whole, I would say this matchup is going to go to G2 because I feel that G2 are going to bounce back a lot stronger. They're not going to give Broxer the Graves. And Broxer in group stage, whenever he's gotten this Graves, he's popped off on it. And in the series, sorry, the game I would say, he played exceptionally well with this Graves. I also feel that they're not going to give an Orianna over to Jensen. And realistically, G2 could possibly play this game a lot better than how they did, basically, in week one. Our second matchup of the week is Matchy Esports taking on Sunning Gaming. And for me, this matchup is gonna go to the LPL representatives. Last time they faced off, Sunning won, and it was a pretty big stomp, in my opinion. I think the second time these two teams are going to face, Sunning are once again going to win. Sunning look by far the second or third best team in this group, and Matchy being probably the weakest, I would say, out of the four teams here. And as a whole, I feel that Sunning should beat this Matchy lineup once again. Matchy continue to stay out on the rift for the third game of the week as they now face off against G2. For me, this matchup was actually very close the first time these two teams faced off. Matchy actually looked quite good, though G2 smashed them. And for this game, I feel G2 will actually complete this dem demolition. I feel that week two G2 is going to be very big here. And realistically, I feel that G2 should smash this matchy lineup and win this game. 
Sunning and TL return to the Rift for the next game of the week, and for me, this matchup was actually an interesting one, as I feel this will decide the second place team in Group A. And for me, I feel that the LPL representatives are stronger on paper, but TL, I feel, can actually win this game. I feel that Team Liquid are going to beat Sunning, even if they did lose to them, and lose to them quite badly, I wouldn't admit. I still feel that Team Liquid should be able to win. Yes, they've kind of got a lot of weaknesses. Obviously, the champion pool for certain roles, i.e. top and jungle, have come into question for this lineup. And as a whole, I just feel that Sunning might exploit it, but Team Liquid are probably going to come into this game with a lot of fire if they're able to beat G2 earlier in the day. Team Liquid remains on the Rift for their last game of the group stages. They're going to be taking on Machi for probably the third slash second spot. I mean, Machi beat Team Liquid the last time these two teams faced off, and Team Liquid did not look strong at all in that game. But obviously, as it comes into second week, I would say that Team Liquid of the two look the stronger. And for me, I feel that Team Liquid are gonna win this matchup and it's probably gonna be a stomp. I just got a feeling that Team Liquid are not gonna hold anything back. And our last matchup in Group A is probably the biggest matchup in Group A. This was the most explosive matchup in the first week of groups. It's G2 versus Sunning. Now, the last time these two teams faced off, G2 won. And G2 won by some unfortunate situations by Sunning kind of getting caught out and over committing into a play and G2 catching him out and running it straight down the mid lane. Obviously, that could happen again. We could see a G2 win, but for me, I feel that Sunning are going to win this last game in Group A and advance to the semis. Sorry, not the quarters. I, even though I haven't got Sunning in the top two, I just got a feeling after watching week one that they're gonna go through to the quarters after this phenomenal sort of display and actually showing me the strength of this lineup. We now jump from day one to day two and with that jump we can have another jump to group B. We're gonna be finishing out this group with the first matchup of the day probably being the easiest one to predict PSG versus Dam One. Now, after the first week of games, PSG are without a win. And for me, I feel that they're gonna not pick up a win. The only team in their group that they can realistically get a win against is Rogue. And in their first matchup of Worlds, it was against Rogue, and Rogue just stomped them. And Rogue had probably the biggest stomp against this lineup in this group. Because Rogue were unkillable and actually showed the strength of the LEC at Worlds 2020. Now, for this game, I've gone with Damwon, the undefeated team in this group. The team that's looked ever so good. And I honestly have to say that they're going to probably remain undefeated in Group B. Now, the second matchup in Group B this week is going to be probably the group decider to decide who's the second team qualifying for quarters. It's Rogue taking on JD Gaming, and for me, I've gone with Rogue. That's a surprise to many, as JD have looked the second strongest in this group. 
Though, I've got a feeling Rogue are gonna be upsetting a couple of teams in Group B this week, and probably doing it in some pretty damaging style. Rogue remain out on the Rift for their second matchup of the week. It's gonna be them taking on Dam One. Now, I've got a strong feeling that Dam One is stomping this group, and I've got a feeling that Rogue are gonna upset some teams. So, which way am I going? Well, I'm obviously gonna go down the route of the stomp. Dam One, the LCK representatives, the first seed are gonna smash Rogue here, and that is no exaggeration. Dam One have looked phenomenal. It's gonna be them versus Top, in my opinion, in the grand finals, unless we get that before then, obviously with the quarters and all that jazz. Though I don't think they will face each other in the quarters. I think it's first versus second seeds, and Top are gonna probably finish first in their group. But for me, it's got to be Dam One winning this game over Rogue. It's now time for PSG's two in a row of games, their first taking on JD Gaming. And for me, this matchup is fairly one-sided. JD, I feel, are gonna beat this PSG lineup. And if you can't tell, I'm not gonna give a game to PSG at all in Worlds, which is a shock, I know. I've got a lot of feelings for this team, obviously. They're a phenomenal squad to do what they did to get out of planes with three substitutes. So for me to say that they're not going to pick up a game in groups is kind of harsh, but it's reality. They're not as strong as this lineup as what the rest of their group are. So I feel that PSG are going to lose to JD here, and you can obviously tell where I'm going with the next prediction. So it's now time for Rogue vs PSG, and as stated before, you can kind of tell where I was going here. I've gone with Rogue, I just can tell you that Rogue are a team that's going to be very good against this PSG lineup, who's kind of not looked that good since coming into groups and realistically should not pick up a game here. And now it's time for our first Anarchy Analysis matchup of the week. We're not doing an NAEU week like we did for week one of groups. We're instead doing LCK and LPL. So, as you can tell, it's JD Gaming versus Dam One. And for me, this matchup was so heavily one-sided when these two first faced off that you can kind of get the good feeling. It's going to be the exact same flavor. I've gone with Dam One here over JD purely based on week one and how dominant this Dam One squad has been. Though JD, in my opinion, could bounce back here. They're the sort of team to come out with their sort of all-out aggression LPL style that realistically could work against the LCK. Now we move to a new day and it's time to hark back to the intro of this video. It's the EU buff activated team Fnatic taking on the fight, uh, fate decided team in TSM. For me this game, last time these two teams faced off, honestly Fnatic outskilled TSM. They were outdrafted TSM in this game. And for me, if TSM get a good draft, like they're not over committing in certain roles, they could win. However, I've gone with Fnatic for this game, in my opinion. Fnatic are in week two. Usually, this is where their big buff of wins comes, as they've been able to beat RNG in the second week to qualify them for the quarters, knocking out RNG from Worlds last year. And I honestly feel that TSM won't pick up many wins, if any at all, in Group C this Worlds Tournament. It's time for a second dose of LPL versus LCK action as Gen.G take on LGD. 
Now, week one, we saw a very interesting and close matchup between the two lineups, and obviously, I went with the LGD prediction in week one. And I'm actually sticking with that prediction for week two. I've just got a strong feeling that this LGD lineup will pick up the win here, as Genji will be coming off of a loss to a Fnatic on the last day of week one. So obviously there may be a few different factors into nerves, obviously performance is affected by a player's mentality coming into a game, so realistically I've got a feeling that they're going to be on a slight edge. Obviously they've got some young players in this squad and they could potentially feel the pressure of Worlds. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for my second upset prediction of this group. TSM versus Gen.G. One team's three, sorry, two and one. The other team is zero and three. I've gone with TSM. Just got a feeling the upset's going to come through here. And it's going to be very, very big. I feel TSM are going to have a bounce back week two. Though, I just got a feeling they're not going to qualify for the quarters as much as I want them to. It's time for another back-to-back -back set of games for a team, and this time it's LGD getting that fun sort of experience. Now, for me, I feel that this is going to be very impactful in my actual predictions here, as I've gone with Fnatic winning this game. And that is a huge thing to say because I feel that EU buff has going to be hitting Fnatic here. And I feel that they're going to be able to beat the LPL squad that I do believe they lost to in week number one. And realistically, I feel that this Fnatic squad should win this matchup and should beat this LGD squad. And now I'm going to use the Doppler effect. You're going to take the effect of the last match, TSM face off against LGD. And for me, I feel that with LGD just playing a game before this, I feel that TSM are going to capitalize on that and actually have studied quite hard on how LGD are playing on this day. Obviously, you can kind of tell where to attack on map if the players say not doing that good, he looks poor. That's the big thing about week two, is you get a bit more of an advantage as you're playing multiple games on a day. You can see how players perform against other players and who's suffering, who's not. And I feel that TSM should capitalize on this against LGD here. And for me, it's going to be a close game. Obviously, they played last on week one. And I feel that that's going to be a factor here. As I'm going to say that LGD kind of snuck away that game from TSM. They outdraft them. And that's been a big thing about this TSM squad. They've been outdrafted quite a few times here at Worlds already. And for me to say that about a team that you see me uh, compliment a lot, it's got to be annoying that I've gone with TSM for this game based off of uh, nerves. And yeah, a team that's got a few rookies on it, i.e. TSM, going up against some experienced players. I've said that the team that's got experienced players is going to feel nervous going into that game. And the last matchup in Group C is Gen G versus Fnatic. This is going to be a big explosive match. As by the way I've predicted it today, this is going to be the decider of who's first and second seed in Group C. And obviously, with the way this group is actually shaping up, it's the most competitive group. And in my opinion, we might see a tiebreaker here for this group. I don't know if there will be tiebreakers. That's down to the actual day shaping up. 
And realistically, I will be so hyped if there is a few tiebreakers in this group. And for my prediction for this group, I've gone with, sorry, for this game, groups not done until this game's done. I've gone with Fnatic. I expect Fnatic to win this group, exit out of this stage as the first seed of Group C, and actually perform quite well against some of the opposition they're going against. Group D gets the final day of Worlds group stages, and we're going to be kicking off with a matchup that I honestly feel is going to be quite interesting. DRX versus FlyQuest. For me, this matchup is one-sided. And I feel that Solo in the top lane for FlyQuest has been underperforming and I feel that DRX are the sort of team to exploit that. And for me, I've gone with DRX winning this game over FlyQuest. And fear not, I haven't predicted FlyQuest losing all the games this weekend. I've predicted this loss. Whether or not they win the other two games, it's down to you watching the rest of this video to find out. Up next is a matchup that was a possible contender for one of the Anarchy Analysis matchups of the week. It is going to be Top Esports taking on Unicorns of Love. And you're probably wondering why do I have this matchup as such high like caliber? Why do I feel this is going to be a matchup that I want to cover? Well, these two teams are the craziest two teams at Worlds, and in my opinion, they've got some of the wackiest drafts that I've seen so far. Did you know that this top esports squad brought out Nocturne mid? Did you know that this Unicorns of Love squad brought out Karthus ADC, Ori ADC, Swain ADC, and they kind of have made this draft a very frenzy sort of setup. Now, that is one of the big reasons why I'd love to cover these two teams as a analysis, but I'm gonna probably full game cast it because it is that sort of wacky thing. Yes, they do do these crazy drafts, but top by far the best team in this group and are my actual big picks of winning worlds this year. And for me, this game's going over to top esports. They're just super duper strong, even though they do have weaknesses in how they play. The Unicorns of Love get back-to-back -back matches as their second matchup is against DRX. Honestly, they get the two hardest matchups for themselves out of the way first. For me, I would say this game's over to DRX here. They're just the sort of squad to just out macro the unicorns here and show them who's boss. And realistically, you can kind of tell where this group's going by how it's shaped up after week one. There's two favorites in this group and realistically, the other two teams are just there. And that is kind of annoying if you're an NA fan and a uh, whatever region, the something states region for unicorns. But yeah, for this game, I've gone with DRX just based on skill. Now it's time for the FlyQuest double whammy of games. They firstly take off against top esports. And for me, this matchup's fairly easy to predict. Go with the team that's got 369 in the top lane who can just 3, 6, 9, 12, 18. Don't know why I've gone to 18 when there's 15 in between, but he's gonna be slapping solo in the top lane, is where I'm heading with it. And top I'm gonna probably win. You've just gotta have uh, some sort of sympathy for PoE, as he's been trying to carry this team on his back basically, and it's been a struggle. And for me, I would honestly say that PoE will get some kills against Knight here and possibly pop off, but I don't think that FlyQuest are winning this game. FlyQuest's second double whammy is them taking on the Unicorns of Love. 
Last time these two teams faced off in week one, it was a PoE carry game. You could basically rename FlyQuest to PoE here because he was the team. He was the guy that got the win for FlyQuest over the Unicorns. And I don't think he's going to stop here. I've got a feeling he'll do the same once again against this Unicorn squad. As he's the sort of guy that would actually play very well on the Unicorn squad if he was their mid laner. As he's the sort of guy that also has these wacky sort of champions that Unicorns can pull out. And I would honestly say that would be a big sort of addition if the Unicorns were to pick him up. And finally, it's time for the second Anarchy Analysis matchup of the week. DRX versus TES. Top Esports versus Dragon X. This matchup for me is going to be in probably the biggest matchup of the week. This is another LCK versus LPL matchup. And it's going to be interesting to see how these two teams do. Obviously, Top currently lead the group and beat DRX in their first matchup. And I've got a feeling that's going to happen again. Though, the two squads for me, it is top heavy, favoured, and realistically, we're going to be seeing that come through here in this game. Before we end this video, I figured it's time we actually explain what's going to happen if there is tiebreakers. Basically, at the end of the six games on each day, there's a possibility of a tiebreaker. For me, that is when I'll be releasing my predictions for who wins. Obviously, this will be from Thursday this week onto Sunday. So we've got a possibility of maybe two or three matches in each group. That being said, if you follow me at Izzle33 on Twitter, you'll find my predictions there, as well as more Worlds content as it happens. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, leave a like down below. Subscribe if you want to, if you want to. And I will be seeing you guys later. Peace out.